Hey guys, want to share work that I've been doing on Romans 11, just a lot of different ideas. And it's kind of a run through of Romans 11, I guess, but um, yeah, I probably won't be finished going over, you know, I probably won't be finished with a expository, you know, it won't be complete for another week or so, I'd say. But Anyways, Romans 11, Romans 11, 1, Paul says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And so, this is pretty self-explanatory, I think, is that it's saying, you know, is God finished with the Jewish people? He's saying, no, I am a Jew myself. And he's saying, uh, you know, he is... He has the mercy of the Lord, you know, he's part of the kingdom of God, and he's a Jew, and so, obviously, God is not through with uh, Jews. Um, and, and so, I guess, you know, there is some different ways that it could be talked about how how the Israelites are considered God's people, you know, because there's there's like the true people of God, and then there is a sense which Scripture talks about, you know, um, Israel being, you know, like the national Israel being his people also, but uh, in a different sense. Um, you know, Jesus was born of the Jews. Jesus was a Jew himself. And... Um, you know, they represented God's kingdom on earth. Um, but anyway, um, you know, when he talks, I am an Israelite, I am of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. When he says, I am an Israelite, he's talking about, you know, the physical, fleshly Israelite. Obviously, he's also a sp spiritual Israelite. And, you know, the seed of Abraham, the same. He's actually the fleshly seed of Abraham. He's He was descended from that line. And he also is, you know, the spiritual seed of Abraham also. But he's talking about the fleshly side. Um, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. And I think that, you know... There's the doctrine of the foreknowledge of God and like how God knows, you know, or, or the omniscience of God, you know, how God knows everything and he knows things before they happen and stuff like that. That's kind of generally what we think of as foreknowledge with concerning God is, you know, that he knows events before they will happen. But I think, you know, when he's talking about cast away his people, which he foreknew, he's basically talking about you know, how God uh, dealt with the nation of Israel in the Old Testament in the past. That's what he's talking about. The people which he foreknew. He's basically repeating himself from the first verse, you know, as he casts them away. And he says, What ye not, what ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he make, maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, God, is, so basically, He's saying God's not finished with the Jewish people, like he's saying before. And Paul refers to the scripture as proof. Uh, he feels to Elijah, who makes intercession to God for Israel. Again, we're talking about the fleshly Israel. And then Romans 11, 3, he, he reads that. It says, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. And basically, you know, what's said in that verse is that Israel sinned and betrayed betrayed God, persecuted his people, even to the point of persecution of people. And uh, commentators say, you know, he could be reading from various scriptures, but one of the main ones that's referenced is 1 Kings 19.10. It says, And he saith, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, 
and they seek my life to take it away. So that talks about killing the prophets, it talks about tearing down the altars, it talks about him uh, being left and um, them seeking his life. And then in Romans 11.4, Paul said, But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And so basically God says to Elijah that there are those among Israel who have not betrayed him. So not all of them have gone this way, but there are some who are staying true to God. And we see... 1 Kings 19.18, verses later from the previous verse in 1 Kings that I said, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So that seems pretty close to what Paul said in Romans 11.5. It says, even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And so, let's see what I put here. Just as there were Jews who were faithful to God in the Old Testament among those who were not faithful, there are still Jews faithful to God in this current time, even then and even now. Now what does it mean according to the election of grace? Because this is where Calvinism can come in. You know, they... Um, have a lot to say about election. Their version of election is that God chooses who will be saved before men were created. Um, and so I put that according to the election of grace means according to the grace of God. These faithful Jews have chosen to be faithful of their own free will but it is of God's grace that they are allowed to be a part of his kingdom. God's grace is available for all who will be saved. Only those who freely choose him receive his grace. And so he says, you know, there's even a remnant, speaking specifically of the Jews, there are some believing Jews. Okay, there are some uh, Jews who, who will be saved. Uh, or that already are. And then in Romans 11, verse 6, it says, And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. It's basically saying that salvation is by grace. And um, the remnant that is a part of God's kingdom is because of God's grace. God did not say according to the election of nationality in the previous verse, but grace. So that was kind of his main point is that, you know, the Israels that the Israelites that are right with God are not right with God because they are Israelites. They're right with God because of um, because they have, you know, accepted God's grace. They have believed in him, basically. And so uh, if it is of works, uh, what he's saying by that is that some of the Jews have sought God's kingdom by works. Okay, Romans 11, chapter, or verse 7. What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So Israel, he says, Israel hath not obtained that he seeketh for. He's talking about the unbelieving Jews. They have not obtained. Obviously, Paul is a Jew himself, and he has obtained. Election, again, we see the word election, and he's referring back to the same election he's spoken to, of the election according to grace. He spoke about in verse 5. He said, but for the election hath obtained it. And so, some Jews have sought salvation by works, trying to earn their way into the kingdom, and failed. The Jews who have entered the kingdom are the ones who have entered by God's grace. Not because of their nationality, not because of their works. And the rest were blinded. And they're blinded of their own free will. 
and are choosing to have their eyes shut to the truth. Okay. Now, Romans 8.11, for the rest of this section at the beginning, he goes back to some scriptures, basically, um, that talk about the blinding of, of Israel. Romans 11.8 says, According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And basically commentators think that he's reading from Isaiah 29.10, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he converted. And I'd like to go into that verse more. But basically, you know, as I said that Israel is chosen to be blind, and then here we see, you know, the Lord pouring out a spirit, and I think that, you know, the way that this is worded and everything, it's really that, you know, God has allowed them to, you know, God has allowed the consequences for their decisions to, to come upon them. Um, it's their own doing, okay? It's not like God has, has done this uh, for revenge or vengeance. So, I don't think, I think, uh, this is basically just this to happen to them. Um, so, it's interesting though, and, um, as, and I think that some people might try to think too literally about God pouring out a spirit of deep sleep on someone like God sending like a, you know, some kind of mystical spirit or something. But really just what it means is that basically they're blinded to the truth. It's, it's all that it means. It's just figurative language, um, you know, and hath closed your eyes. Okay. Um, they've willingly closed their own eyes because uh, they've rejected, they've rejected God. So, Romans 11, 9. David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Basically, coming from Psalm 69, 22. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare. Let it become a trap. Romans 11, 10. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. Coming from the next verse in Psalm 69:23, let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and let their loins continually to shake. Um, and I think it's interesting that David says, "Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them." And I'd like to understand more what that means. I don't get that. But I think that it's basically kind of what I said is like, let their table be made a snare. It's like their own doing. It's like, you know, what they want to happen, they want to reject God, then let them have the consequences of what's going to come of that, basically. Um, but, um, I think I'm going to end this here. Maybe I'll just do this in sections, but you know that'll be Romans one through ten. Don't know what else to say about this. Right, so I can go into these a little more better. So this is just uh, part of this. It's just part of the working of this. So thank you guys. God bless.